And sticking with coronavirus, we are seeing hospitals across the globe take action. In Hackensack, New Jersey, the Meridian Health Institute for Cancer and Infectious Diseases, developing a test to diagnose the virus. David Perlin joins us now. He's the chief scientific officer and senior vice president of Hackensack Meridian Health Center. So, David, there are some tests out there, but I know there are sort of different versions of different tests and there's supply concerns about the tests that are out there. So uh, what are you all doing? So uh, we early on developed uh, a test which was based on specifications provided by uh, the CDC, which is essentially the CDC test. Uh, it's, not the te it's not the test kit which they've been providing, it's, uh, but it's all the ingredients of, uh, and all the components of the test. Uh, we further expanded the platform to uh, utilize a, a European platform just to give us a little more confidence uh, in the testing. So how accurate is your test and are people, you know, when will it be used widespread? Well, we've, we've validated it with uh, reagents that we have in hand. The one thing we haven't done is validated it with, with live virus, which is, in, in my view, the, the gold standard. But according to the FDA uh, guidelines that were just recently issued, uh, our tests uh, should be valid. And we're confident that it, it, it detects uh, virus at a, at a very low level. This is one of those things really where, you know, the entire healthcare community is really on board and really um, almost <laughs> in bullish territory of just, you know, almost taking advantage of the situation. So how do you see this playing out in the future for the Institute in terms of being able to respond early to something like this? Um, that's what we do. I mean, we're, we're taking really innovative science and making it work for our patients in, in real time. That's where science is today. And so we've been developing molecular tests for the last two decades. It started with SARS and anthrax, and it's continued through outbreaks throughout. And we can do this routinely, but we're not the only laboratory. I mean, there are many academic laboratories, hospital laboratories, that can do this quickly. Look, I think the issue is we have to collapse the gap from when you identify a patient to when you can tell uh, the healthcare professionals and the patient what you're dealing with. Uh, you know, you just brought up a big issue because because of what's happened out west, there seems to be this six-week period of where people could have this and not know they have it in which there could be transmission. So what you just said, how quickly, because New York State only has 75,000 tests available, right. how quickly could your test potentially be available on a wide-scale basis? So um, we're making our, our test available for our healthcare network that includes uh, 17 hospitals. Um, fund fundamentally, um, the, 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 the test uh, the test can be made available uh, you know, a, a, a across the nation. Uh, we have plenty of expertise. Uh, it's just a question of uh, having these tests, validating them, not necessarily relying on the test kits per se, but using all the components. It's, it's like the difference between a cake mix and the individual components of the cake. I mean, you get to the same place, and that's what we can do. You, you were talking about uh, how you know this test can get or get to uh, an accurate sampling at a very small level. W right. When do you start to test people? Because we've heard, you know, South Korea they're testing tons of people, and then there's been talk of maybe the reason why the numbers are so low here in the U.S. is because we simply haven't been testing the right people. When do you make that kind of decision? So the CDC um, um, altered their guidelines for who should be tested. Now, essentially, uh, any patient that, that presents with clinical symptoms, uh, essentially with uh, um, a lower uh, acute respiratory distress, and there's no other etiology, meaning that they don't have flu, they don't have a bacterial or other type of infection, they're a potential candidate to be tested. That's, that's a change. So that expands the, uh, the number of people who will be tested, and, and, and that's what you're seeing now. What it doesn't address is the people who are asymptomatic and are potential carriers. That's a completely different um, situation. So drawing on your experience with some of those other epidemics that you talked about, um, mm -hmm. SARS, for example, and drawing on what we have seen in China and the spread of this, what do you think the trajectory looks like in the United States? How many infections do you think we could have and how quickly? Yeah, I wish I could tell you that. I mean, I hope it's, it's limited to what we have now. Uh, the likelihood is extremely remote. I think, uh, I think most health experts uh, believe that we're going to see a number of, of new infections. And if you look at the SARS epidemic, even as the epidemic uh, started to wane worldwide, we still had sporadic outbreaks in places like Toronto. And then even as the Toronto 
Toronto outbreak died down, then a new sporadic outbreak um, arose. So I wouldn't be surprised by this. And, and I think the last thing to recognize is that there are a number of patients who were deemed negative to coronavirus, and then sometime later, days or even a week later, they were seen to be positive. And part of this gets at, well, what's the reservoir of the virus within the body? And you know, if we're looking at respiratory samples to test, is that necessarily sufficient? Or you know, do we need to have sub subsequent negative tests over a period of time before a person is truly negative and, and non-infectious? So we, we, just have, we, we just have to sort of play this out. David Perlin joining us from Hackensack Meridian Health Center. Thank you. Hey, investors. Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.